Hi folks, it's time to talk a little bit now about some observations of actual diameters in the world. And if you recall, we had, uh, we talked about diameters in random graphs of a particular form and we were finding that for large enough graphs um, and uh, degrees that weren't too large or too small, log n over log d was an approximation of the average path length and diameter. And let's do a rough back of the envelope calculation. So you can pull out your calculators. Say that the world population these days is somewhere between 6 and 7 billion. Let's take 6.7 billion as a, an estimate. And let's suppose that you just count, uh, you know, friends that you talk to on a reasonably regular basis. So friends, relatives, take 50 for an average uh, number of people that pe uh, somebody might talk to on a regular basis. Now do log of uh, 6.7 billion over log of 5, uh, sorry, log of 50. What do you end up with? Six. Um, so this is the six degrees of separation that is often uh, talked about. Um, the idea that, you know, to get from any individual to any other individual in the world, you actually don't need a, a, a lot of uh, hops. You can get there fairly efficiently. Um, so let's take a look at some data and see if, if uh, those kinds of numbers actually are observed. And so what I want to look at is what's known as the Ad Health data, the Adolescent Health data set. Um, it was collected in the 1990s, interviews of a bunch of high schools in the United States. And uh, there's network data for a lot of these high schools, so people were asked to name friends their friends and uh, kept track of their friends. And you know, the, the schools actually vary quite a bit in the racial composition, the size of the, um, uh, of the school, how many students are in it, and a bunch of other things. So the networks have some variation, and we can see whether the diameters in these networks look like the uh, log n over log d that, that we found in the um, estimate. And so let's have a quick peek at some data. So this is the average shortest path and it's plotted for the uh, giant component um, versus log n over log d. And this is from 84 high schools for which there's a fairly complete network data. And this is from work I did with Ben Golub. And um, when you look at this graph, so what do we have on the um, x-axis? We have, this is the log n. So look at the number of people in the high school, divide by log of the average number of friends that they had in the network. And then here's the actual average um, shortest path. Right. And if the theorem's true, then there should be on the, all of these points should lie on the 45 degree line and actually um, remarkably close in terms of, of looking at real data. Um, the, 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 the spread here that we get in terms of log n over log d and average shortest path um, fits fairly well and you know indeed for the smaller schools you have fairly short average path lengths and uh, for the larger schools you have larger ones but they're matching up very much with log n over log d um, seems to be fairly accurate. Now some other curious numbers that are out there in the world. Um, Erdos uh, had a large number of co-authors and uh, 509 co-authors and he wrote more than 1400 papers in his life. Um, and uh, so people, mathematicians, like to count their Erdos number. So you count how many co-authors does it take you to reach, uh, how many links um, does it take you to reach Erdos. So Erdos had a co-author, they co-authored with somebody else, and so forth. You can find what your own Erdos number is. Um, interestingly enough, there was an auction in 2004 um, of a co-authorship with a person named William uh, Tozier. This was on eBay. Um, his Erdos number was four, and so uh, if you uh, won the auction, then he would put your name on a paper with him, and so that would make your Erdos number five. Um, the winner paid more than $1,000, actually, to have, the, have their name on a, uh, a paper with Tozier and, and end up with an Erdos number of uh, five. So that's just sort of a, an interesting uh, curiosity. Um, when we look at uh, average degree, one thing that's going to be important is, you know, the, the, this says that the, as the density of the network changes, we're going to end up changing average path length. And interestingly enough, networks do come in very different uh, varieties of, of sizes. So, for instance, these high school friendship networks on average um, 6.5 uh, connections per individual to degree. 
There's a paper by Bierman, Moody, and Stovall looking at romantic relationships in some of these high schools. There, people had, uh, on average, during a time period, about 0.8 of a relationship. Um, you can look at, at uh, this is uh, data from uh, work I did with Abhijit Banerjee, Arun Chandra Sikar, and Esther Duflo on um, borrowing uh, money, borrowing um, kerosene and rice from other individuals in, in small rural villages in India. Average another of other households that you uh, given household borrows from, 3.2. Various co-authorship studies, depending on what you're looking at, um, economics, biology, math, physics. Um, you see different numbers of co-authors that people typically have, say, in a decade or some time period, varying from you know just under 2 to uh, over 15.5 if people work in larger teams. So you see different numbers of co-authors. People always ask about Facebook. Um, Facebook number about 120. So you see different co connectivities in these graphs, and that's going to lead to different properties. So some of them are going to have different, you know, shorter average path lengths. Other ones are going to have larger ones. And so whenever we're looking at a given problem or a given context, it's important to define the network carefully because these are going to have different properties depending on whether we're looking at a borrowing network, a collaboration network. Um, something uh, like Facebook where you, know, uh, you just have a friendship uh, means you have a link to somebody else's page um, uh, well, and, and various other kinds of things um, or you know, friendships, romances. There's a whole series of different kinds of, of ties we might define and they're going to have different network properties. Uh,